welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 more ripoff songs. Say it again, it again. For this list, we're looking at notable tracks that were considered similar enough to warrant the threat of a legal action or an actual lawsuit. Did we forget a song considered a ripoff? Let us know in the comments below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 20. Boys Keep Swinging by David Bowie vs. Middle of the Road by Blur In an homage to David Bowie, the Britpop band Blur took a few cues from the legend's work on the Lodger album. Their single Middle of the Road bears a close resemblance to Bowie's song Boys Keep Swinging. Boys. Boys keep swinging. Most of the music revolves around the same chord progression. Hey, come to the basic musical idea originated from Bowie and producer Brian Eno's experiments in the late 1970s, which also included the similar-sounding Fantastic Voyage. Damon Albarn and his bandmates boldly saluted the music icons and eventually had to give them credit. Following some legal efforts, the songwriting team for this track received an adjustment. Boys always work it out. Number 19. Healthy by the Raisins vs. Truth Hurts by Lizzo Lizzo has seen tremendous success with hits like Truth Hurts. The empowering anthem allows the artist to showcase her independence in iconic lines. I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm a hundred percent that bitch. But it resulted in an accusation that the singer lifted a key line from Twitter, along with separate assertions regarding proper songwriting credit. Justin and Jeremiah Raisin claimed that their demo Healthy was the basis for this track. The brothers said that they worked with the artist on the idea, which allegedly shares lyrical and musical similarities with her eventual single. Their attorney writing, we look forward to sharing the sound recordings, videos, photographs, and musicology that 100% prove that collaboration. Lawyers denied this connection, but credit was later given to Mina Lioness for inventing the 100% that bitch mantra in a tweet. Lizzo also sued the Raisins for apparently harassing her about their authorship claims. Number 18. Sunrise by Yaysayer vs. Pray For Me by The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar Collaborating for the soundtrack of Black Panther, The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar recorded the song Pray For Me. I'm always ready for a war again. The track prompted the band Yaysayer to sue for copyright infringement. Claiming that the work borrows from their single Sunrise, the rock group says that there's a comparable vocal part in both efforts. The act even argued that the accused artists replicated aspects of the original recording for their own benefit. Pushing back against the allegations, The Weeknd and Lamar asserted their innocence. Two years after the newer composition's release, Yaysayer ended the lawsuit and left the songwriters with full credit. Number 17. Baby Can I Hold You by Tracy Chapman vs. Sorry by Nicki Minaj featuring Nas For her track Sorry, Nicki Minaj wanted to use a sample of Tracy Chapman's classic 1988 song Baby Can I Hold You. Sorry. Minaj went ahead with the production despite Chapman denying her request. Sorry. Is all that you can say. When Minaj's 2018 effort was leaked, the original singer-songwriter sued in an attempt to stop the new composition from being released. A judge ultimately decided that Minaj's work could be considered fair use. The entire lawsuit came to a close in 2021, with the rapper paying $450,000 to Chapman. After all of that hassle, Sari mostly remains famous for this copyright dispute. Number 16. Long As You Know You're Living Yours by Keith Jarrett vs. Gaucho by Steely Dan Jazz rock legend Steely Dan are known for their epic compositions and complex structures, but that doesn't mean they aren't also inspired by their contemporaries. When I say, boy, we can't miss. Keith Jarrett's Long As You Know You're Living Yours is all over their track Gaucho and singer Donald Fagan later mentioned being inspired by it. Jarrett naturally filed suit after hearing similar musical elements in the 1980 release, along with a familiar tempo. 
they each implement a signature saxophone line. Both songs are undoubtedly cut from the same cloth in a way that even casual listeners could decipher. Following a legal battle, the plaintiff was awarded a co-writing credit. Number 15, Security of the First World by Public Enemy versus Justify My Love by Madonna. If you happen to be a fan of Madonna's Justify My Love, you may or may not be aware of the Public Enemy song Security of the First World. I wanna kiss you in Paris. The introductory section of the pop singer's hit sounds almost identical to the rap group's instrumental. The hip hop collective argued that the 1990 single sampled their beat but the songwriter Lenny Kravitz never admitted to consciously taking it. Producer Hank Shockley said that his drum pattern was taken from him without permission and considered a lawsuit. A counter-argument said that it was just inspired by an earlier James Brown work, but Shockley asserted that it was original. The battle ultimately never became more than a few back-and-forth remarks in the press. Number 14, We Run Things by Floragon versus We Can't Stop by Miley Cyrus. The early 2010s saw the return of Miley Cyrus as a pop star, releasing the hugely successful single We Can't Stop. Some of the lyrics involve a line that singer Floragon recognized. With a few basic differences, both tracks share the same central idea. The Jamaican singer felt that it was too close to his own song, We Run Things, and followed up with a massive lawsuit. He initially hoped to receive damages in the neighborhood of $300 million. After Cyrus agreed to settle, the artist, also known as Michael May, won an unknown amount of money. Number 13. Carry On by Bobby Caldwell versus Carry On by Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X is one of the boldest and most provocative artists of his era. He's also been embroiled in multiple cases of copyright infringement, with this one being lesser known than the attention surrounding his hit Old Town Road. The single Carry On borrows more than just a title from Bobby Caldwell's song of the same name. Once the publishers of the older singer found out about it, they promptly served the rapper with a multi-million dollar lawsuit. The younger performer allegedly didn't ask permission before releasing the track on his mixtape, Nazarati. As of mid-2023, the pending suit still hadn't been resolved. Not the same as before, I changed a bit. Number 12, Creep by Radiohead versus Get Free by Lana Del Rey. Radiohead was sued for plagiarizing part of their breakthrough hit, Creep. When you were before, couldn't look you in the eye. But that didn't stop their publishers from going after Lana Del Rey for chord structure similarities between Creep and Get Free. Undoubtedly. The publishers stated that they were merely asking for the writers of Creep to be added as co-authors. The singer said she made an offer to them for a percentage of the royalties, but the Rock Act allegedly attempted to take away all of it for themselves. The suit was later settled, according to the Get Free performer. While some of these events are still unclear, there hasn't been any subsequent change to the credits for Del Rey's track. I don't belong here. Number 11. Shadows of the Night by Pat Benatar vs. No Rains by Rascal Flatts After songwriter D.L. Byron heard the Rascal Flatts track No Rains, he was convinced that the group had taken a cue from one of his biggest works. The author of Pat Benatar's Shadows of the Night felt that the songs were too similar to be a coincidence. Byron then sued the country group, feeling that the trio reinterpreted the chorus for their own tune. Representatives for one of the bandmates released a statement that denied any alleged plagiarism of the 1984 hit. Listeners will likely find themselves siding with the Benatar collaborator after hearing the introduction of the more recent release. All these years later, it seems that there hasn't yet been a proper end to the lawsuit. Number 10. Take a Dive by Brian Pringle vs. I Got a Feeling by Black Eyed Peas Unknown songwriter Brian Pringle alleged that a version of his track Take a Dive was used for the Black Eyed Peas smash I Got a Feeling. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. 
According to the musician, he sent a copy to Interscope Records, and somehow the songwriters got a hold of it. It's never been proven whether or not it ever got into the hands of producer David Guetta or any of the band members. Regardless of the questionable accusations, the plaintiff tried to make a case that revolved around the repetitive guitar riff. Pringle's work features a similar sound that he hoped would be surefire evidence in court. Unfortunately for his case, there wasn't sufficient evidence to move forward, and the claim was dismissed. Number 9. Boogie Chillin' by John Lee Hooker vs. LaGrange by ZZ Top When you're dealing with the blues, it's not uncommon to find patterns between songs. This was the case with ZZ Top's classic single LaGrange. The publisher for John Lee Hooker's track Boogie Chillin' asserted that the two were especially close, filing a lawsuit against the band as a result. I did the boogie. I did the boogie, boogie. It's undeniable that the blues legend inspired countless artists. In the case of ZZ Top, a case could be argued that they subconsciously used Hooker's riff. The reality of the situation was that the music was considered public domain for its origins. Unable to convince the proper authorities, the suit was officially dropped in 1995. Number 8. 80s by Killing Joke vs. Come As You Are by Nirvana Following the release of their album Nevermind, Nirvana shot to fame and even received scrutiny for their songs. Come as you are, as you were. Such was the case for their single Come As You Are. British group Killing Joke thought the grunge band ripped off their guitar riff, leading to the threat of legal action. There was definitely a potential case to be argued with the help of musicologists. After the death of Kurt Cobain, the possible suit did not go forward, with the plaintiffs looking to move on with their lives. All that remains is the knowledge that Cobain himself knew the two pieces were perhaps too similar. Number 7. Love is a Wonderful Thing by the Isley Brothers versus Love is a Wonderful Thing by Michael Bolton Singer Michael Bolton was known to revisit soul classics and invent a few of his own. Birds fly, but don't think twice. The spread their wings. For his track, Love is a Wonderful Thing, the performer claimed to have no knowledge of the song of the same name by the Isley Brothers. The R&B group sued on the basis of plagiarism for more than just the title. Love is a wonderful thing. Love is a wonderful thing. What followed was an almost decade-long event that included failed appeals on the part of Bolton. Ultimately, the courts ruled in favor of the brothers and awarded them millions in royalties. It was considered one of the most significant payouts in music copyright history. Number 6. Taj Mahal by Georgie Benjour vs. Do You Think I'm Sexy by Rod Stewart when Rod Stewart went disco in the late 1970s, he apparently did so with the help of Georgie Benjour's music. The latter's song Taj Mahal provided the basis for the unforgettable Do You Think I'm Sexy. Benjour sued the British rocker, noting that the melody in the chorus is eerily close to the one in his own track. <laughs> Rather than letting it become a drawn-out case, the former Faces frontman did the honorable thing. Stewart admitted that he had heard the other tune before, and subconsciously swiped it for his own number. The profits for the pop tune were donated to UNICEF, giving this lawsuit one of the happier endings in music history. Number 5. If You Could Read My Mind by Gordon Lightfoot vs. The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston one of Canada's greatest songwriters, Gordon Lightfoot's legacy stretches much further than some people might think. If you could read my mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. His DNA may or may not have inspired the producer Michael Masser on his composition The Greatest Love of All. Famously covered by Whitney Houston, the track features a vocal melody that's fairly close to the one in If You Could Read My Mind.
Lightfoot sued Masser for allegedly borrowing several bars of his 1970 song. The folk hero eventually gave up on the lawsuit, later realizing that Houston was being unfairly lumped into a dispute that wasn't her fault. The feeling's gone and I just can't get it back. Number 4. Pour Some Sugar On Me by Def Leppard vs. Midnight Memories by One Direction while the groups seem like a world away, Def Leppard and One Direction have one alleged connection. The former single Pour Some Sugar On Me could be a possible inspiration for the pop act's Midnight Memories. Many audiences found the choruses to have more than a passing resemblance, with the hard rock band considering a lawsuit. The writers of the 1987 classic decided to stop short of any official legal proceedings. Guitarist Vivian Campbell felt that the songs were both indebted to the blues, adding that there wasn't much reason to pursue such a common concept. The younger quintet's embrace of rock sounds ended up being a success in its own right. Number 3. Every Breath You Take by The Police vs. I'll Be Missing You by Puff Daddy and Faith Evans if you want to sample a song by Sting, you should probably ask him first. P. Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy, didn't get permission and paid the price for it. There's no question that the bad boy producer took the main guitar part from the police wholesale. Seems like yesterday we used to rock the show. I laced the track, you locked the flow. Used in a touching tribute to Biggie Smalls, the iconic arpeggio was the perfect inclusion to the hit rap single. The frontman for the 1980s band sued and won all of the track's royalties. You'd imagine that this would have created a lot of animosity between Sting and Diddy, but they eventually became unlikely friends. Number 2. Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye vs. Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran Considering the scope of Marvin Gaye's contributions to music, it's not hard to imagine that many artists are constantly inspired by his output. I've been really trying, Those in charge of his rights have been known to scrutinize high-profile singles that have any similarities with Gaye's catalog. In the case of Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud, some felt that it was too close to the classic hit Let's Get It On. When your legs don't work like they used to before Potential lawsuits were drawn up, dismissed, and reworked over the years. The trial finally went forward in 2023, at which point Sheeran was cleared of any potential infringement. With both songs using a comparable chord structure, the final ruling bodes well for pop stars that have faced accusations of consciously or unconsciously stealing from others. Found love right where we are. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Taurus by Spirit vs. Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin Arguably the most lauded rock composition ever, Stairway to Heaven is the epic of all epic songs in its respective genre. And she's buying the stairway to hell. Led Zeppelin and fellow rocker Spirit were in close enough proximity that they would have been exposed to each other's music. The latter band had an instrumental called Taurus, which has a guitar part that's not unlike the beginning of Zeppelin's track. <laughs> They sued for copyright infringement in 2014, entering into a multi-year war over the rightful authorship of Stairway. Robert Plant and Jimmy Page seemingly didn't have a memory of the plaintiff's music, and ultimately, the powers that be sided with the more famous musicians. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.